one of the most frequent questions we've had over the past few months from clients wanting to jump in on the current SPAC craze is this. What if we invest just a tiny little bit in SPACs? Is that okay? Despite the risks of investing in SPACs that we've talked about on this channel, risks ranging from poor performance and investor dilution to conflicts and even fraud, despite all this, I know that some of you are also wondering the same thing, whether you should hop on the SPAC train with just a small investment or perhaps a not so small investment. So today we're going to talk about how folks like you and me can invest in SPACs. The best way for normal savers to invest in SPACs is by means of what's called an ETF. As of this taping, there are three SPAC ETFs on the market and each of them are quite different. By the end of this video, you'll know one, what a SPAC ETF is, two, what the three different SPAC ETFs offer you as an investor, and three, the two key questions that will help you figure out which SPAC ETF best suits you. And at the very end, I'll even show you how you can easily buy the SPAC ETF that you want with the click of a few buttons. For those of you new to us, welcome to Diamond Nestic, the number one place to learn about money, investing, and retirement. I'm Jennifer, and I've spent most of my life in finance. Started working at banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs at the age of 17 and graduated top of my class from NYU and Harvard Business School. Studying, you guessed it, finance and business. And now I work with companies like Bloomberg, WeWork, and Walker Edison, teaching their employees all about financial literacy and wellness. And for those of you new to SPACs, SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, sometimes referred to as a blank check company. It's essentially a shell company with absolutely nothing in it except a certain amount of cash raised via an initial public offering, an IPO. Imagine it as a treasure chest full of money set up by some very well-known big name people, money that will be used within the regulatory timeline of two years to find and buy a private company. This private company is then merged into the publicly traded SPAC and becomes a public company. It's generally much easier, faster, and cheaper for the private company to go public via a SPAC than a traditional IPO. Check out our SPAC starters guide right here to learn more about what a SPAC is and other SPAC basics. When investors first put money into a SPAC, they have no idea what they're investing in. They have no idea which private company will be bought. In fact, often no one has any idea. Investors are relying solely on the SPAC founder's reputation, track record, industry experience, and network to find an amazing private company to buy within the two year timeline. You can imagine then that it can be rather difficult for the average retail investor like you and me to figure out which SPAC stock to buy. We're going in with blind trust, not knowing anything about anything, except that there are some people with big names running the show. And that's where the SPAC ETF comes in. For those of you new to investing or ETFs, ETF stands for exchange traded fund. Think of it as a basket of hypothetical stocks that mimic the performance of an index, like the S&P 500 or Dow Jones. ETFs can also track a specific industry like tech. They can also track a commodity like oil or gold, or they can track a completely different asset class. In our case, these ETFs are tracking SPACs. ETFs can be purchased or sold on a stock exchange in the same way as regular stocks. On the most fundamental level, you can think of a SPAC ETF as a big basket of different SPACs. A SPAC ETF can hold just pre-merger SPACs. These are SPACs still looking for acquisition targets. Or it can hold just post-merger SPACs. These are SPACs that have already acquired or are in the process of acquiring a private company. Or it can hold a combination of both pre-merger SPACs and post-merger SPACs. Some folks will argue that investing in a SPAC ETF limits your upside potential because gains are spread across a number of SPACs. The reality is though, you don't know what you don't know. And with SPACs, you don't know much. 
Investing in SPACs is risky business. So a SPAC ETF helps you diversify your investments, meaning it helps spread your risk so that if one SPAC goes bust, it won't wipe out all of your money in one fell swoop. It also means that you don't have to go out there and buy a hundred different SPAC stocks with all the time, work, and associated trading costs. All you need to do is buy an ETF or two. To learn more about investing and the difference between ETFs, index funds, and mutual funds, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll be covering all those topics and more in the coming weeks. Before we jump into the three SPAC ETFs that are on the market right now, I need to go through our legal disclaimer. If you simply can't wait much longer and have to find out about these SPAC ETFs right away, I've included the timestamps for the specific sections below this video. Be sure to come back to the legal disclaimer later though, it's important. So please note that Diamond Nestec is a financial literacy education and coaching company and that I'm a licensed insurance broker. We are not a bank, securities broker, legal tax or financial advisor. And this video, like all the other stuff on this channel, is for general educational and informational purposes only. All investing involves risk and past performance is not indicative of future results. As our trademark saying goes, everyone's financial journey is different. We are not fully aware of your individual financial circumstances. To see if we can help with your specific situation, please email us at jennifer at diamondnestic.com to schedule a consultation. The three SPAC ETFs we'll be talking about today and the only three out there as of this taping are one, the Defiance Next Gen SPAC derived ETF, two, the SPAC and new issue ETF, and three, the Morgan Creek Exo SPAC originated ETF. If you're enjoying this video so far, it's going to get even better fast. So be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. YouTube likes these positive vibes and so do we. All right, there are two key things you should be thinking about when considering an investment in these SPAC ETFs. First and foremost, ask yourself this. Do you want to invest in pre-merger SPACs or post-merger SPACs? Again, pre-merger SPACs are SPACs that are still looking for private companies to buy, to merge with. And post-merger SPACs are SPACs that have either announced that they found an acquisition target already, or they've already merged with a private company. Advocates of pre-merger SPACs argue that they are a better buy if you can stomach the risk. This is because the majority of SPAC investors have historically made the most money by investing in pre-merger SPACs. They wait for the acquisition target to be announced and then sell on the price hike. This doesn't mean that investing in a pre-merger SPAC is a 100% foolproof strategy because there is a high level of risk in not knowing who the acquisition target will be with pre-merger SPACs. And in recent months, some SPAC stocks have plummeted after announcing their acquisition targets, as was the case with Churchill Capital 4. Post-merger SPACs on the flip side offer greater certainty than pre-merger SPACs because you already know what you're buying. The acquisition target is either formally in place or the merger has already happened. Having said that, numerous studies show that the vast majority of post-merger SPACs underperform the market. Here's the most recent study published by the Harvard Law School on corporate governance. The most telling column is the 12 month one on the far right, which shows that all post-merger SPACs, regardless of the management team that's in place, all post-merger SPACs have underperformed the overall market in this study. HQ stands for high quality management and non-HQ stands for non-high quality management. To sum things up, this study essentially shows that after holding post-merger SPACs for 12 month period, you could have lost money or you could have lost even more money. Pundits though, because there's always two sides to every story, argue that studies like these are not representative because the SPACs of today are much higher quality than those of yesterday. This remains to be seen. So think about it now. Do you want to invest in pre-merger SPACs, post-merger SPACs, or a combination of both to hedge your bets? This will greatly help you decide which SPAC ETF, if any, is best suited for you. Check out this video over here to better understand the top risks of investing in SPACs. 
we'll walk you through everything from course back performance and investor dilution to conflicts, fraud, and more. So the second important question to ask yourself when looking at these SPAC ETFs is this. Do you want a passively managed or an actively managed ETF? Passively managed means that the buy, hold, and sell decisions in the ETF are quasi computer driven and based on a set of rules. So basically automated. There are no human beings involved in the decision making process. Passively managed ETFs generally have the lowest expense ratio, the lowest fees. Actively managed ETFs do involve human beings in their buy, hold, and sell decisions. Human beings that have a lot of experience at big banks with expensive MBAs from fancy schools. Anyway, moving right along now. These human beings, also known as fund managers, will cost you more money. So the expense ratio will be higher. So the first SPAC ETF to hit the market, the Defiance Next Gen SPAC Derived ETF, ticker symbol SPAK. It was launched in October 2020. It is a passively managed index tracking fund with an expense ratio of 0.45%. So if you were to invest $100 in SPAK, you'd pay 45 cents in fees. SPAK holds 40% pre-merger companies and 60% post-merger SPACs. It holds post-merger SPACs for a maximum of two years. SPAK has an AUM or assets under management of hundred plus million dollars and a year to date return as of this taping of approximately minus 7%. SPAK's main selling point is that it offers broad diversification in the SPAC market, meaning all your eggs are really spread out across your basket and you don't have to pay too much for these efforts. The second SPAC ETF to hit the market, the SPAC and new issue ETF, ticker symbol SPCX is essentially the polar opposite of SPAK. It was launched in December 2020 and is actively managed by Tuttle Tactical Management with an expense ratio of 0.95%. So if you were to invest $100 in SPCX, you'd pay 95 cents in fees, more than double what you would pay with the first SPAC ETF we talked about. If you like this handy comparison chart we've created for you, and there's more to it, just keep watching. This took a lot of time and effort to put together. So we'd really love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that we can keep on bringing you this great stuff. And also so that YouTube can show us a bit of love and keep pushing out these videos to folks like you who are interested in learning about how to grow their wealth. So the second SPAC ETF, SPCX, it holds 100% pre-merger companies and 0% post-merger companies. According to SPCX, pre-merger companies are sold once the acquisition is announced or after the SPAC shares go up in price. SPCX has assets under management of about $140 million and a year-to-date return as of this taping of around plus 10%. SPCX's main selling point is that its fund managers have the financial expertise and experience to find the best price backs with the most talented management team. How they'll do this is completely unclear because at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know. And with a pre-merger SPAC, as we've said before, you simply don't know very much until the SPAC announces the deal. Which brings us to the third and most recent SPAC ETF to hit the market, the Morgan Creek Exos SPAC originated ETF, ticker symbol SPXZ. If the other two SPAC ETFs are toddlers, this one is like a newborn. It was launched at the end of January 2021. SPXZ is also actively managed with an expense ratio of 1%. So if you were to invest $100 in SPXZ, you'd pay a dollar in fees. Those fees just keep getting higher and higher. SPXZ holds about one third pre-merger companies and two thirds post-merger SPACs. It has assets under management of close to $33 million. So the smallest amongst the SPAC ETFs on the market right now, but it's also the newest. And its year to date return as of this taping is about minus 21%. I know, wowzers. I'm not sure how much weight you'll want to put on those year-to-date returns though. 
you can see that SPAC ETFs are still in their infancy. The oldest is a bit more than six months old and the youngest is just going into its third month. So take the year to date returns with a grain of salt. So the third SPAC ETF, SPXZ, its main selling point is building long-term value, which I have to admit I like, but I'm still not sure how they're going to do this. And at the end of the day, this space is still very new. So we're not jumping into SPXZ just yet or any of the other SPAC ETFs for that matter. SPXZ says it will hold post-merger SPACs for as long as they see value. Unlike SPAK, the first SPAC ETF we talked about, which dumps post-merger stocks after a two-year holding period. In the words of Mark Yusko, who runs SPXZ, if we are successful, we expect to hold onto these post-deal companies for a very long time as we find the Amazons of tomorrow. So for all you folks who do want some skin in SPACs without losing your shirt, these are the three SPAC ETFs you can choose from right now. Just use this handy chart we created for you and answer these two questions to help you figure out which SPAC ETF, if any, might be best suited for you. The first question, do I want a passively or actively managed SPAC ETF? And the second question, do I want to invest in pre-merger SPACs, post-merger SPACs, or a combination of both? At the end of the day, this will depend on how much risk you can stomach. And if or when you're ready to click the buy button, buying a SPAC ETF is as simple as buying a stock in your investment or retirement account. You just need an account with the likes of Robinhood, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Ameritrade, or E-Trade. And for those of you with a financial advisor, speak with your financial advisor directly. Here's an example of me and my Fidelity account. Say that I wanna buy that third SPAC we just talked about, SPXZ. I simply enter the ticker symbol up in this box here to pull up the chart, confirm that it's actually the ETF I wanna buy here, and click the buy button. It's as easy as that. Which SPAC ETF is your favorite, if any? Drop us a comment below and let us know. And if you want to learn more about how a SPAC works, how it's structured, and the risks involved in SPAC investing, take a look at our SPAC 101 playlist right there. Thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. We'll be back in a few days with another wealth building video just for you. And as always, shoot us an email at jenniferdiamondnastic.com if you have any questions at all, or leave us a comment below.